Right now, beneath the city of Naples, something is happening that scientists cannot ignore. In the last 30 days alone, 876 earthquakes have rattled the ground beneath half a million people. That's not a typo. 876 tremors in a single month. Some so shallow you can feel them through your kitchen floor. Others deep enough to crack the foundations of centuries-old buildings. And the ground itself? It's rising. Not slowly, not gradually, but at a rate that matches the most dangerous period this volcanic system has ever recorded in modern history. This is Campi Flegre, the Flegrian Fields, a supervolcano hidden beneath one of Europe's most densely populated regions. And right now, every scientific instrument pointed at this caldera is screaming the same message. Pressure is building. Gas is rising. The earth is swelling like a balloon being inflated from below. And the last time this happened, with this intensity, it triggered a magnitude 4.6 earthquake that sent thousands running into the streets. But here's what makes today different. Here's why volcanologists are watching this system more closely than ever before. The area around Pissiarelli, one of the most active fumaroles in the entire caldera, has become too dangerous for scientists to access on foot. Temperature readings that used to be taken directly at the source now have to be measured from a distance. The ground is too unstable. The heat, too, extreme. The risk too high. When the people who study volcanoes for a living cannot safely stand on the ground they're trying to measure, that tells you something critical about what's happening beneath your feet. And it's not just one fumarole, it's not just one measurement acting strangely. This is a system-wide acceleration. At Solfatara Crater, Temperatures have climbed to 179.5 degrees Celsius. At Pisiorelli, 103.5 degrees. Both locations showing steady, unrelenting increases over years of monitoring. The gas ratios coming out of these vents, the chemical fingerprints of what's boiling below, they're changing. Carbon dioxide to water vapor ratios are climbing. Carbon dioxide to methane ratios are rising. These are the signatures of magma degassing at depth, of molten rock pushing gas upward through fractures in the Earth's crust. The ground itself has risen more than 157 centimeters since this crisis began. That's over five feet of vertical uplift. Entire neighborhoods sitting higher today than they were a decade ago. The sea level measured by monitoring buoys has followed, rising 29 centimeters in response to the caldera floor, pushing upward beneath the bay. At the right monitoring station, the uplift rate is 25 millimeters per month. That's approaching 30 millimeters per month, the exact threshold recorded before the most intense seismic sequence of 2025. This is not speculation. This is not dramatic exaggeration designed to generate fear. This is what the data shows. This is what 8,600 earthquakes in 12 months looks like. This is what happens when a volcanic system transitions from rest to unrest, from quiet to active, from stable to something scientists describe with one word, evolving. And evolution in a volcanic context means change rapid change, unpredictable change. So what happens next? What does all this pressure, all this gas, all this uplift actually mean for the people living above it? And more importantly, what are the warning signs that this system is about to do? Something no one wants to see. Those are the questions we're going to answer. Using the latest data, the newest measurements, and the most up-to-date scientific understanding of how Campi Flegre operates when it wakes up. Let's start with what's happening underground right now. The seismic data from the last month paints a picture that's impossible to ignore. 
876 earthquakes divided into 10 distinct swarms. These aren't random tremors scattered across weeks. They're clustered, grouped together in bursts of activity that suggest something specific is happening at depth. When earthquakes organize themselves into swarms, it typically means one thing. Fluid movement, magma, gas, or superheated water forcing its way through rock, creating fractures, opening pathways, and generating seismic energy as it moves. Most of these earthquakes have shallow hypocenters. That means they're occurring in the first few kilometers of the Earth's crust, exactly where pressure accumulates when there's nowhere else for it to go. And here's the detail that matters most. The percentage of earthquakes exceeding magnitude 2.0 is increasing, not decreasing, not stabilizing, growing. That tells us the energy being released isn't dissipating, it's consolidating. Over the past 12 months, more than 8,600 earthquakes have been recorded in this caldera. To put that in perspective, that's an average of over 23 earthquakes every single day for an entire year. Some days are quiet. Other days see dozens of tremors in rapid succession. The pattern isn't constant, but the trend is undeniable. This is a system under stress, responding to forces deep below that are not going away. Now let's talk about what's happening to the ground itself. The uplift data is one of the most reliable indicators we have of what's occurring beneath Campi Flegre. At the right monitoring station, the ground is rising at a rate of 25 millimeters per month. That might not sound like much until you realize that's almost one inch every single month. Sustained, relentless, month after month. Ooh, so... To understand how extreme this is, consider that most volcanic systems show uplift measured in millimeters per year. Campi Flegre is measuring it in centimeters per month. And it's not just the land. The sea level rise measured by the Medusa Monitoring Network shows 29 centimeters of increase. The entire caldera floor is pushing upward and the ocean is responding to that displacement. The ground deformation isn't uniform either. It's centered offshore, slightly northwest of Pozzuoli, which tells us exactly where the pressure source is concentrated. Hmm. That location hasn't changed significantly over months of monitoring. The pressure isn't migrating. It's accumulating in one place, building steadily, and expressing itself through continuous uplift and seismic activity. When a volcanic system shows this kind of focused, sustained deformation, it means whatever is causing it has a stable source. And stable sources don't dissipate quickly. They persist, they grow, they push until something changes. Now we need to talk about what's happening at the surface, because this is where the invisible becomes visible. At Pisierelli, the fumarole that has become the focal point of this entire crisis Temperatures have reached 103.5 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to boil water instantly. Hot enough that standing near the vent would burn exposed skin in seconds. But here's what matters more than the raw number. The temperature trend. Since 2009, Pizzarelli has increased by 5 degrees Celsius. That might seem gradual, but in volcanic terms, Sustained thermal increases over years indicate one clear reality. More heat is reaching the surface. At Solfatara Crater, specifically at the Boca Grande Fumarol, temperatures have climbed even higher, than 79.5 degrees Celsius. Since 2002, that's an 8 degrees Celsius increase. Again, this isn't a spike. It's not a sudden anomaly that appeared overnight. This is a long-term trend showing consistent, measurable escalation. And when you map these temperature increases against the seismic data. But temperature alone doesn't tell the full story. The gas composition coming out of these fumaroles reveals what's actually driving the system. The ratio of carbon dioxide to water vapor is increasing. 
the ratio of carbon dioxide to methane is climbing. These chemical signatures are critical because they indicate deep magmatic degassing. When magma rises or depressurizes at depth, it releases gases trapped within the melt. Far, burr, carbon dioxide escapes first because it's less soluble in magma than other gases. What we're seeing in the fumarole chemistry is evidence that magma, somewhere beneath this caldera, is actively degassing. Here's the part that no one wants to say out loud, but the data forces us to confront. Pissierelli has become too dangerous for direct scientific access. The area is no longer safe for researchers to enter on foot. Temperature measurements that were once taken with handheld instruments at the fumarole's edge are now recorded remotely using thermal cameras from a distance. The ground instability, the extreme heat, and the unpredictable nature of the venting activity have made close approach impossible. When scientists who study active volcanoes professionally cannot safely access a monitoring site, that is not a minor detail. The seismic swarms aren't decreasing in frequency. The ground uplift isn't slowing. The temperatures aren't stabilizing. The gas chemistry isn't reverting to baseline values. Now, let's address the comparison that matters most. The current activity at Campi Flegre closely resembles the conditions observed in February and March of this year just before the caldera produced its most significant seismic event in decades. A magnitude 4.6 earthquake that was felt across the entire region. The uplift rates were similar. The seismic swarm patterns were comparable. The thermal increases followed the same trajectory. We are not predicting that another major earthquake will occur. So what does this mean for the half million people living within the caldera and its immediate surroundings? It means vigilance. It means preparedness. It means understanding that volcanic unrest doesn't always result in eruption. If you live in Pozzuoli, Naples or surrounding areas within the caldera zone, know your evacuation routes. Have an emergency kit ready with water, food, medications, and important documents. Monitor official sources from NGV for updates on alert levels and activity changes. Do not rely solely on social media for critical information. And understand that volcanic systems operate on their own timeline, not ours. The ground beneath Campi Flegre is speaking. The question is whether we're listening carefully enough to act before it shouts. If this information matters to you, hit that subscribe button. Because what happens next at this caldera will define volcanic hazard response for an entire generation.